Okay, so it's a wintry wonderland here today. Uh, got up around, oh, I don't know, maybe 38 degrees today, and uh, uh, it, it melted about half of this snow down. I woke up at quarter to five this morning, went downstairs, flicked on the light, and of course it was snowing like a bastard. And there goes a, there goes a deer running down there. I am not hunting, by the way. Uh, I've been, I hurt my back a few weeks back. Oh, no pun intended. I hurt my back a few weeks back. I've been taking a walk about every other day. And I can't seem to get the tires. There's another, that's a buck too. Woohoo! Anyway, uh, I've been, you know, every other day. So yesterday, I got up at 3 o'clock. Well, let me finish. This morning at 5 o'clock, it was snowing. It was dumping snow by the by the gobs. You know those great big snowflakes? You wonder how in the hell they're not snowballs and they don't hurt when they hit the ground. That's how, that's how much snow was falling from the sky this morning. And that lasted for about two hours. And of course, it got up to 38 degrees today. About 50% of it melted away, which is fine. Now, like I said before, I do have over 2,000 acres of hay to make. And uh, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, this is going to melt off of here. We're supposed to be at cold weather, which 20, 20 to 22 degrees at night which is kind of normal for this time of year, but it warms up in the day. Like, oh, hold on a second. Let me move this over here. But it warms up during the day to like 35 to 45 degrees, which is normal. What's not normal about this time of year is the amount of snow that's on the ground. November is just like a dusting month. December, you really don't see much snow in December until generally the first week of January. And even then it's it snows and then it stops snow and dries up and off you go but it freezes at night so the plan for me this uh, winter to get this 2,000 plus acres of hay made is to pretty much start mowing hay at midnight and then mowing into the morning and early hours early hours of the day you know till it starts to thaw back out again which no big deal right uh, and it isn't it's not really that big a deal so that's my thoughts on how to get this shit on the ground and get it so that it opens the ground up enough exposes it because let's face it two and a half to three ton to the acre hay is like insulation on top of that on top of that ground so I need to really break it open and I have three mowers that can really mow pretty quickly uh, they can really mow pretty quickly so if we get these 20 degree nights we may be able to float them mowers across the across the ground pretty easily but not with snow on top of it so today was 40 degrees it's supposed to get down to 30 tonight which is freezing obviously and then the uh, tomorrow we're supposed to get up into that 40 40 degree weather again so the rest of this stuff is going to melt and it'll melt from the bottom up too because the ground is still pretty warm and as I'm walking along here I can feel the uh, the mud beneath my feet uh, water's not squishing like I thought it should um, here. I'm on a hillside you know and it's just green grass under there this is not, it's not terrible. So this stuff melts off. There's not any snow in the 10 day. So we're pretty good there, but there is some cold weather. My whole uh, objective here in the next couple of, hold on a second, let's switch arms again. My whole objective over the next few weeks is to actually just mow this stuff. And then when it does get freaking cold and it's frozen, then I can rake it. Uh, probably rake it in the daylight if it's frozen, still frozen enough, and then wait until say midnight, and then start bailing unless it's frozen. You know, unless it's windy. If it's windy, then I cannot do anything. But uh, yeah, that's just the plan. Now to get back to my back, 
um, like I said, I was taking a walk every other day down through the field, and then I go through the woods here, and it's actually helping my back. Uh, it's just helping my back. And the reason for this is not to shoot a deer or anything, because I'm not, it's not hunting season for shotgun anyway, but we have a, an extremely large number of coyotes here. And the coyotes here on the east coast, they're not like the coyotes out west. These things are called, I guess you could call them a red wolf or a koi dog. Uh, there's a difference between the two, but the size of them is not much different. Uh, these animals weigh anywhere from 60 to 90 pounds. So when you're down in the woods, it's kind of a good thing to have your shotgun. Uh, last time I came down I had 45, but I'd rather have a shotgun. More stopping power, <laughs> you know, just more stopping power. So here's a, here is a corn station. One of the hunters that hunt the property is here and he put that bait station here and of course 10 feet away right there in the tree not 10 feet but about 50 feet away there's a deer stand i see no deer tracks all i see is turkey tracks <laughs> so oh there's some deer tracks so his ambitions are to come down here on like a opening day and waffle a deer from that that spot right there Ooh, anyway, this is kind of hilly. This is where I grew up. There goes a turkey right there. That is a gobbler. I could see his beard. So there's one turkey there. So he flew from a tree right close here, not too far away. Uh, but yeah, I shot my first buck right there. There's a uh, pin, a property line pin there. And I shot it right at the end of the barrel. That's where the, the buck dropped. I had shot him. And uh, got the property pin is right there at the tip of my barrel. So the creek is not a straight line. Our property goes up the other side of that ravine there and uh, to the top of the field. So there are quite a few deer tracks here. Nothing large though. But anyway, I used to run around these woods every day when I was a kid and uh, I used to bring my bow down here I used to shoot squirrels during small game season and it wouldn't surprise me if I did see a couple hundred squirrels while I was here because there's hickory trees here and they like hickory nuts so anyways I guess I've sidetracked again uh, my thoughts oh, there goes another turkey there he goes. I don't know. There he goes through the woods. I don't know if you can see him. Those things are like B-52 bombers. And there goes. I just saw the glimpse of a coyote cutting across the top of that hill there. So, okay. <laughs> when I say a coyote, I'm a 60, 80, 90 pound animal that wants to kill you. In which I wouldn't trust them as far as I could throw them. I'm not coming down here without a weapon of some sort for self-defense. Uh, but anyway, with my back hurting the way it has been, and these walks helping, um, I think I'm just going to continue to walk. I just love it down here anyway. Whew. Talking and holding a camera and a shotgun at the same time is difficult. So I'll just exercise my back here. There goes a squirrel. Right there. There he goes. A little bushy tailed rat. Uh, right there. Not in the mood to move. Must not be too many coyotes. Yeah, turkey tracks and everything. Ooh. Anyway. There goes your deer, right across the way. So you got a coyote over there. There's a deer standing. Oh, there he goes. Up over the top, there's more than one. Oh, 
Yeah, they logged that out a couple of years back. The guy was a real pig. I mean, you can see the trees down over there. This has naturally fell over. But, uh, and probably should log some of it out a little more regular than what we do. But I just don't have the time. Oh. I can feel the burn in my back. So, and walking on snow is not exactly easy. But there's plenty of wildlife here. See, deer tracks. They were coming this way at first. I'd kind of like to catch them up in the field here. See how many are out there. The hunters that come here, they claim they never see them. I found it to be kind of funny whether their eyes are broke or whether they're just looking for antlers, which wouldn't surprise me, but you know, when I go hunting, I kill it and then worry about what it's got on its head later. That's just me. Because let's face it, antler stew doesn't taste very good. One step forward and two steps back is how snow is. Plus this will keep me in shape. <laughs> Anyways, I'm getting quiet because that field is up there. There's an old deer stand I used to hunt in years and years ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. Anyway, I guess I'm gonna put the camera away. I'm out of breath. This doesn't look like I'm on a hill, but I'm on a hell of a hill. <laughs> um, we used to sled down here, believe it or not. When I was a kid, we'd start up at the top where my sister was buried, and we'd come down, and we'd end up all the way down at that creek where I first crossed with runner sleds. The plastic sleds were not controllable enough to get around the corners, but uh, that's how steep a hill it is. If you get a sled on it, you know. So, anyway, those are the plans. That's what's gonna happen uh, with the hay making. And I'm hoping that it works out that way. If not, I don't go to the Philippines in February, and I will be making hay in February, which is generally the coldest month for us. That's just before she starts to warm back up again. March is usually in like a lion and out like a lamb, meaning it's brutal at the beginning of the month, usually with snow. And then at the end of it, it's green. It starts to green up into April. So I don't know if that's gonna work out for me or not. But anyway, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. And please don't tell me I'm out of shape. Because if you just did what I did, you'd be huffing and puffing too.